This is part two of the science of NoFap. So it takes two weeks for us to recover from one orgasm. We have a hangover for two weeks. So our brain chemistry has not come back into equilibrium uh, after one orgasm for two weeks. Um, okay, so I'm going to focus on the brain again in this video. We're going to look at the preoptic area and the ventral tegmental area. And these are both uh, part uh, located in the brain. Okay, so the functions that the preoptic area offer us is it helps with regulating our sleep. It helps, and it's also critical for regulating both parent, uh, parenting and mating behavior in sexual arousal. Now, functionally, on a biochemical level, preoptic, the preoptic area releases gonadotropins. And when these gonadotropins are released from the preoptic area, they go into the blood, and then they tell the testes to produce more sperm. They tell the ovaries in women to produce more ova. And they tell both male and female um, <clears throat> sex areas to start producing more sex hormones. Now, the preoptic area is five times larger in males than it is females. And that has to do with males producing testosterone very early in development. Uh, females do not produce testosterone early in development. And it's the testosterone early development that goes into the brain and is converted to estradiol. Now, females produce estrogen in early development, but that does not reach the brain because there's a protein in blood in females that binds to estrogen that prevents estrogen from going into the brain to develop the preoptic area. That is why in males, the preoptic area is five times larger than it is for females, and it helps distinguish the male and female sex. Okay, so we also have the ventral tegmental area. And the ventral tegmental area is basically an area in the brain that's responsible for a reward. Um, it's a reward center in the brain. And it helps us with motivation, cognition, and aversion. So it, it helps us um, go after our goals. It helps us be motivated. And conversely, it also uh, can cause us to, be at, um, to, to, to have aversions toward our goals and uh, motivation as well. Now, the reason that it has these dual effect, this dual effect is because it releases dopamine as well as GABA. 65% um, of the VTA is made up of dopamine cells and 30% is made up of GABA cells. Now, when the ventral tegmental area is releasing dopamine, that is when we are more motivated. That's when we want to go out and we want to um, achieve our goals to be number one in the room. Okay, so that's when we are, re that's when the ventral tegmental area is producing dopamine over uh, GABA. It's reward-seeking behavior. When GABA is being produced in the ventral tegmental area of our brain, which is found in the limbic system, that's when we are prone to uh, being aversive to the goals that we want in life. That's when we actually have these short-term bursts of anxiety. So when we have GABA being produced uh, over dopamine in the ventral tegmental area, that is when we do not want to get out of bed. That's when we want to shy away from the things we want in life. Okay, so how are these two connected? They are connected by nerve fibers. And when the um, preoptic area is stimulated, and it's stimulated through testosterone, testosterone binds to these androgen receptors. Now, <clears throat> when this happens, and it can also, these androgen receptors can also bind to estradiol, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, any of the other sex hormones that we produce. These um, receptors, these androgen receptors, are, are liable to bind to them, but it's testosterone that binds the titus, and then I believe dihydrotestosterone. Anyways, these preoptic, this preoptic area has a lot of these um, androgen receptors, and the VTA has some, but to a far lesser extent. Now, when testosterone binds to these, it stimulates the POA to reduce the amount of GABA being produced in the VTA. So anyways, when testosterone binds to the preoptic area, it um, downregulates the production of GABA in the ventral tegmental area. It increases the production of dopamine in this area. So we are actually reward seeking. You see an attractive female or someone you're attracted to, you wanna go out and you wanna pursue that person. That's the testosterone and dopamine working together. Testosterone is causing a release in dopamine from the VTA. Okay, so after we have an orgasm, our dopamine cells shrink for two weeks. So this, I think, is universal throughout the brain. But dopamine cells shrink in the brain for two weeks. That means there's going to be a drop in dopamine because of that. Not only that, 
is that specifically on this preoptic area, the androgen receptors that testosterone binds to die off in this POA area. Um, and they can die off for about four days. So in rats, it shows that after they have an orgasm, after a male rat has an orgasm, the uh, testosterone receptors, so these androgen receptors, actually die off for about four days, or a bunch of them do uh, on the preoptic area. Now, as a result <clears throat> of a dro drop in dopamine, we're also going to have a rise in GABA because this is also going to be downregulated, and that's likely to raise GABA levels. Now, GABA is a neurotransmitter just like dopamine, but prolactin is a hormone. So when we have a drop in dopamine, we're going to have a spike in prolactin because dopamine and prolactin have a seesaw. Dopa when you raise dopamine levels, you inhibit prolactin levels. So when we have a drop in dopamine after an orgasm because our dopamine cells shrink, we're going to have a rise in prolactin. Moreover, we're also going to have a rise in prolactin when GABA levels uh, increase. And remember, when GABA levels go up, we experience these short-term bursts of anxiety. However, when prolactin levels go up and they stay elevated, um, we can experience long-term emotional stress. So for people who are having frequent orgasms and they keep having these base, lower baseline levels of dopamine, they're likely to suffer from um, relatively higher levels of prolactin as well as higher levels of GABA, which means you're going to suffer from short-term anxiety um, of, you know, events, excuse me, short-term anxiety like bursts, if you will, as well as a sense of long-term emotional stress. Not only that, you're not going to be um, as likely to pursue some goals in life. You may have a flat affect from this as well, and even just an inhibition to do things in life. So prolactin is also known as a pregnancy hormone, primarily because it helps the women start lactating. And this is really essentially is what's happening after orgasm, both the male and female have the chemistry that's indicative of somebody who's getting ready to um, be pregnant. And there's a lot. So despite the fact that the male isn't actually going to get pregnant and carry the a baby to term, nevertheless, it actually increases prolactin levels in the male as well. So when, when someone has sex, the prolactin level spiked by four times that of if they were to masturbate. But don't get me wrong, in both cases, prolactin levels go up after orgasm. It's just four times the amount they would if um, this individual was actually having sex versus masturbation. So that's how uh, dopamine and testosterone are related. That's one way to testosterone and dopamine are related. So it takes about two weeks for these dopamine cells to actually um, come back to their normal size. In rats, it takes about four days for these androgen receptors to grow back. And during this whole course of this two weeks, you're going to have a seesaw effect of both hormones and neurotransmitters like dopamine, prolactin, and GABA.